Well, hey there, this is Scott, your Hoosier Marshal, here for another video from Northeast Indiana. Today, I'm doing my Freedom Friday a day early, so I'm having Freedom Friday on Thursday. Mrs. Marshall and I both have the day off tomorrow, and we have a lot of things planned, and I don't know if I'll have time to make a video or not. So I figured I would just make it today and I'll go ahead and post it today a day early. The handgun today is this. So I can zoom in on it. This is a Grendel P12 380. This gun is from about 1981. Uh, said nothing to write home about. It, this, if you know anything about guns and you know anything about Grendel, this gun was invented and produced uh, by a, from a man with his last name is Keldron, and uh, his company went on to become Keltec. So, in a sense, this is one of the original Keltec guns. This gun has the European style, which no one likes, magazine release. They work. They're just not as handy as the push button to eject. Um, but the original guns, the I believe the first one was a P10, had to be loaded with stripper clips, like uh, an old military rifle or something. You you loaded uh, I don't know how many rounds. You loaded however many rounds of 380 on a stripper clip, stuck it. Stuck it in there and stripped your rounds down in. It did not have an external magazine. It was all internal. Um, and that's how you loaded those. They, uh, Like I said, they're nothing special. They're, they're not super high quality guns, anything like that. But the story behind this one, my father-in-law was a... A deputy and eventually the chief deputy on the local sheriff's department and he bought this gun years ago and carried it as his backup gun and he retired ended up getting a divorce and decided he was gonna sell everything and move to Arizona so he sold off all of his guns and everything and Originally, I didn't buy this gun from him. My brother-in-law bought it from him. But then through a little bit of horse trading, I ended up with it. So, not a very valuable gun, but it has some sentimental value to me. I don't shoot this very often. I have a few times. It, it shoots okay. You can see here, it has a hammer in it. It's a hammer fire. Um, and like a lot of the small, because this was considered a pocket gun back in the day believe it or not um, you can see how wide it is how kind of beefy it is but it was considered a pocket gun but like most pocket guns it has a super heavy trigger I've never put a trigger gauge on this I'm sure there's a uh, specs on the internet that say what the trigger weight on this is but it's horrific but with all guns with a super heavy trigger, if you shoot them enough, you get familiar with where that trigger is going to break and you can become pretty accurate with it. I mean, as accurate as you can with a little gun like this. But you can see trigger break, trigger reset is all the way out. Horrible trigger reset. But when this gun came out, it was... Pretty, pretty uh, I guess, inventive at the time. New technology, new material, polymer, metal slide. But 
She shoots. Like I said, I, I don't carry this gun. Every once in a while it goes to the range with me and gets fired. And that's about it. And I stopped the video to tear the gun down because we all know YouTube will freak out if you do that on video. But you can see uh, it was the start of our modern day polymer wonders. The Glocks and kel and everything else. It's not a fixed barrel gun. It has a barrel, guide rod and spring, slide, magazine. Like most of your... Uh, small polymer pocket guns today it's kind of a pain in the ass to break down it's not super hard but you have to pull the slide back and and line this hole right here up with where this little pin is in the frame make a punch and push it out and then it'll come apart not not horribly difficult but uh Compared to most of the, the way that most of our modern guns break down, it's just kind of a little pain in the ass. Nothing major, though. Okay, that'll do it for my discussion about this little handgun. I know that Grendel made the P10, like I said, that you had to load with stripper clips. They made a P30, which was a 22, semi-automatic 22. And this one, if they made more, I don't know. I'm not aware that the value of these guns today i don't know the gun market is kind of crazy it could be anywhere from 250 to 150 depending on the condition of the gun which this one is in pretty good condition but i have no interest in selling it just has a sentimental place for me well hey there this is scott your hoosier marshal here for another video from Northeast Indiana, where guess what? The weather sucks. We still have rain and sleet and wind. The thermometer says it's 42 degrees, but it feels like it's about 22 with the wind and everything that's coming at us. One of these days, we'll see that big orange mysterious ball in the sky once again. Today, smoking the star of the east that was gifted to me by Jason, 68 Saw Gunner. Uh, Jason's very good, very good tobacco. I'm enjoying it. I, uh, I've been smoking this stronger tobacco that I have quite a bit recently and uh, I, I smoked a little Lane 1Q today and it just didn't taste right to me because I've been getting used to smoking this stuff so um, I'm, I'm sure it'll come back to me so Thursday, but I'm making my Freedom Friday video today. I uh, already filmed, videoed that portion of this, and uh, I'll put it in with this. Uh, this is my three-day weekend coming up. I have a lot planned for tomorrow. Uh, our granddaughter will be here, and uh, I'm sure I'll be busy between the things that Mrs. Marshall wants to get done and uh, playing with a three going on four year old I'm not gonna have a lot of time to sit down and make a video so I'm doing it today so I'm jumping the gun a little bit and as usual with the pipe a little champagne of beers they go well together I uh My last video, the sound quality on it really sucked. That's one thing since I started making YouTube videos, I've battled to find the right microphone. Uh, I bought this one I have. It's it's a it's a wired lavalier mic, but and it's uh, there's a mic that 
an antenna that plugs into the phone and goes to the little thing you clip on your belt and then the microphone is wired up and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure in the last video um, it wasn't charged enough and it was cutting in and out and it died on me because the first portion of that video where I was showing you my new zero turn mower I wasn't even using a mic I, I just had the camera on a selfie stick walking around the mower and the sound quality from that sounded better than my damn microphone I think one of these days I should just quit dicking around with cheap mics and go buy a good one go buy a road or something like that because with with all the money that I'm spending on these every time I buy a new one I think I'm taking a step up and it sort of is but it's just not cutting it all right I tell myself that this is just a hobby something I do to pass the time and there's no point in spending a bunch of money on equipment for it I don't have a DSLR camera and like most of us I'm using my cell phone but uh, there are times when having a wireless mic is actually nice when you want to move around and do things but other than that you know like right now I have my cell phone on the selfie stick with a tripod bottom sitting on a table in front of me and hell I could probably get just as good a sound out of my phone as using this damn microphone but one of these days I'll figure it out <clears throat> one of the things we have to do tomorrow do our grocery shopping or running around her and I both actually just absolutely dread it's no fun it's uh <clears throat> going to Walmart you know hell even going to Aldi's trying to save some money on your groceries uh sucks it's just her and I at home now and uh because of the wonderful Bidenomics, um, we spend as much money buying groceries now as we did when we had three kids at home that would each out of house and home. It's, it's ridiculous. Can't afford to live. It's, uh, I hate the thought of it. I dread it. You uh, you walk out of the grocery store with four or five of the plastic grocery bags full and uh, you've spent $200, you know someone's screwing you somewhere along the line. Because as her and I don't eat as much as we used to ourselves anymore. We've... Uh, both been trying to watch what we eat not eating as much eating smaller portions not going back for seconds whatever it may be to help yourself lose weight and it actually does work it's just unbelievable the price of things um, no matter what is the mower i bought yesterday uh, looking at the price is now what they were three or four years ago <laughs> it'll drive you crazy now I called it Bidenomics but uh, you know those are you who do not live in the United States uh, you're obviously not being led by Biden if, you, if that's what you can call it, being led by a trained monkey, but I, I would imagine that uh, our economy has a direct effect on 
the economies in other countries, especially democratic countries, because I would assume the communist countries economies kind of roll together since they're intertwined. So I would think America's economy would affect the other democratic countries across the globe. So if you live there, tell me how it's affecting you. Are you suffering the same fate? Are you paying many times more for what you want to buy now than you did four years ago, three and a half years ago? Or are you doing all right? <clears throat> COVID's been over for quite a while, so we can't blame it on that anymore. To me, there's only one reason. He lives in a white house on Pennsylvania Avenue. I guess I've been talking and smoking that pipe so long, I finished that bowl. So I... Took the time to pack another bowl. This time, it's the old dark fired. Really good stuff, Jason. Thank you. So I saw on the news. This morning, and of course, I watch Fox News. I uh, did see Piper Dave's video about the six people that control everything when it comes to the television networks and the news we watch. He's right. I knew that. But I watch Fox News because I choose to get my news from a network that at least thinks the way I do. Because if I watch CNN or MSNBC or any of the other networks, I would probably smash my television. Just listening to the BS that they spew. So, I saw in the news this morning about the Illegals coming from China. Um, and yes, Fox News was talking about it's not people with children, it's not families coming here trying to seek asylum to get a better life. It's single adult Chinese men who are coming here. And what they said was 100% right. <clears throat> you don't get in or out of China unless the Chinese government wants you to be in or out of China. So how are these single adult men getting out of that communist country? controlled by a dictator and making their way all the way here. And when they get here, <clears throat> what's their purpose? Do you really think they came here seeking a better life? Because I don't. Having a hard time keeping this one lit. I don't think for a minute. They're here seeking a better life. They're here to destroy us. They're here... I don't know. An inside cyber attack? An attack on our energy grid, an attack on our water supply.
maybe they came here to broker deals so China can buy more of our precious farmland. Whatever it is, they're here for no good. And I wish this country would wake up, the people in charge of this country would wake up and put a stop to it. Of course, no one wants to go seek asylum in China or Russia or any of those communist countries <clears throat> because no one wants the life that they have there. But if you did and you wanted in their country for whatever reason and you tried to just stroll across their border, They'd mow you down with machine gun fire. There's no doubt about it. Because they're not going to put up with any BS and someone breaking their laws. But they know we will. They know the, the, the people who are in power and control of our country right now are turning a blind eye. They're turning their head. And they know it. And they're taking full advantage of it. Mark my word, something bad is going to happen. Think of all the countries around the world that absolutely hate Americans and we're allowing them to just walk right in our country. And even if they do get stopped and detained by the Border Patrol, they just ask them a few questions and send them on their way with a cell phone and, and a debit card with $5,000 and, and uh, that we paid for. So anyway, people, we really need a change in this country. And the change is just not with our politicians and the leadership of it. It's in a change of the morals of the people of our country, the morals and values and beliefs uh, of the people of our country. These people know that if you take away anything that unites us, they win. It sets them on a path to victory. And what's the biggest thing <clears throat> we have in this country that has united us for centuries, that has, is always under fire and always, is always trying to be pushed aside, pushed out? Religion. Because they know if you're a church-going person and you're a Christian and you're a believer, you're going to have strong morals and values and good beliefs and and be everything that they do not want you to be so if they can break down those types of fabrics in our society they win and we're allowing them to win and when we sit back and we say well, I see it happening, but there's nothing I can do. We're just enabling it. You, you don't have to do anything stupid. You don't have to riot and do anything dumb. Just stand strong. Make your voice heard. Don't be afraid to say, no, that's wrong. I'm not about that, and I'm not going to support it, and I'm not going to stand by anymore. That's why they're able to do what they're doing to us right now, because too many of us are doing just that. People in our society with a backbone are dwindling away and becoming a rarity.
And that's what they want. So, so I'll get off my soapbox for now. Until my next video, this is Scott, your Hoosier Marshal from Northeast Indiana, saying make sure you always take the time to tell those you love what they mean to you. Because you never know when it might just be too late. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for watching my videos, and thank you, Jason, for the tobacco. I'm enjoying it.